Yes, Your Honor. If it pleases the Court, Roger Moore for the State of Tennessee, and for the record, here today with, <clears throat> pardon me, prosecution team, including General Tammy Meade, General Jan Norman, and General Ronald Dowdy, on the State's motion based as a result of the information received from Middle Tennessee Mental Health Institute concerning Mr. Ryan King's present mental status. We do have Dr. Eisen here to testify. I believe she is present. Yes, made her way back, and with the court's permission and counsel, would ask to make what I consider a few preliminary remarks about this matter. And that is, knowing that Your Honor is totally familiar with the mental health process, the statutes, as the court deals with these matters on a fairly routine basis. However, that knowledge is not, shall we say, widely known outside the criminal courts who deal with this, as is evidenced by some of the comments that uh, we have been privy to from uh, certain so-called experts who are giving opinions about this. That being the case, and for the benefit of the families, the victims' families, the victims, and also the members of the public, I would ask the court's indulgence to have Dr. Eisen perhaps do an explanation of the process and how it works, things that we are familiar with, but I think that may be of benefit, particularly since the parties, defense counsel and the state, are bound by the order entered by Judge Mondelli regarding public comments that we might make. So this is essentially the only forum now that we can hopefully bring some clarity or at least have the explanation of the process to be done as cl clearly as we can. And with the court's permission, I was asked to do that. Thank you. We would call Dr. Eisen. Could you please tell us your name and spell both your first and last name? Rena Eisen, R-E-N-A-I-S-E-N. And what is your profession? I'm a forensic psychologist at Middle Tennessee Mental Health Institute. How long have you been with Middle Tennessee Mental Health Institute? About three years. Okay. And could you give the court and the persons present today a brief history of your educational and professional background. Sure. Um, I have a doctorate in psychology from Xavier University that I got in 2013. Um, I have various um, professional experiences, but mostly they've been in the prison system before I got to Middle Tennessee Mental Health Institute. Um, and then I started, like I said, I started at MTMHI in uh, about three years ago. Right. And <clears throat> since you have been with Middle Tennessee Mental Health Institute, have you testified as an expert in the field of forensic psychology in the courts of Davidson County and perhaps elsewhere? Yes. Your Honor, I would tender Dr. Eisen as an expert as if there's any four hour of her qualification. No, I mean, to be declared as a forensic expert, I mean, an expert in forensic psychology. Okay. Dr. Eisen, you heard me say what we were going to hopefully do with an explanation of the process. And let me just start with, what is forensic psychology? Um, it is psychology that focuses on um, criminals. All right. The legal system. The legal system. Okay. And Middle Tennessee Mental Health Institute, where is that located? Davidson County. All right. I'm in Nashville. And are there more than one mental health institutes across the state? Yes. And do those mental health institutes perform various functions? Yes. And are they all under the umbrella of the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services? Yes. 
And within the department and Middle Tennessee Mental Health Institute and your position as a forensic psychologist, what is your role in examining persons for their present competency to stand trial? Could you just explain that process? Sure. Um, we have a treatment team and forensic evaluation team. Um, right now at Mental Tennessee Mental Health Institute, the psychologists are the lead on the team um, and comp um, uh, do the, we do clinical interviews with the patient. Um, we do psychological testing with the patient. We review um, all available records um, and um, then we also take into consideration observations from all of our staff throughout the day. Okay, now you mentioned team. Is mm -hmm. this a team approach when you have an order to evaluate a person who is yes. charged with crimes? Yes. All right. And who are typically the members of that team? Um, a psychologist, a social worker, um, and then we have psych a psychiatrist doing treatment. And we also have a treatment team coordinator and the nursing staff. All right. Now you use the term treatment. <clears throat> Is that a component of an evaluation? Yes. We provide um, tr psychiatric treatment that uh, we believe might be beneficial for the patient. Okay. Now let me ask, with respect to the evaluations that are done at Middle Tennessee Mental Health Institute and perhaps other institutes across the state, are those done by court orders? Yes. And by whom are you employed? Middle Tennessee Mental Health Institute, okay. the state of Tennessee. All right. Now, are you paid by the state of Tennessee DA's office, district attorney's office? In other words, does our office pay you to do these evaluations? No. Do defendants or defense attorneys, do they pay you or have any input at all in your salary or uh, how you're paid? No. Okay. So within the framework of Middle Tennessee Mental Health Institute by a court order evaluation, are you in essence working for the judge who yes. orders the evaluation? Right. Okay. And so is there any outside influence, bias, or anything about how you come to a decision? No, I get paid the same no matter what decision I make. Okay. And is that true for everybody else on the team? Yes. Now, with respect to competency, is that a question of present competency, as in with this particular case, as Mr. Reinking sits here today, is that what we are interested in? Yes. All right. Just to be clear, today's hearing testimony today has nothing to do with what his mental state may have been at the time of the commission of the crimes, correct? Correct. Okay. That's for somewhere else down the road. Okay. Now, why is it that you have to do these evaluations to determine competency by court order? What is it, could you explain the role of competency in criminal proceedings. What must a defendant be able to do to have the charges proceed against him or her? Sure, um, there's three things that we look at to ensure that a person is competent to stand trial. Um, one is their ability to work with their attorney. Uh, the second one is a rational understanding of the nature of the legal proceedings. And then the third is a rational understanding of the consequences of the proceedings. And is this a standard that is just unique to Davidson County or the state of Tennessee? No. Or is this the country, the United States? Um, it's a standard that's widely used across the country. All right. And <clears throat> without getting into too much of the legal, is that basically a case, U.S. v. Dusky to U.S. K.Y. from the United States Supreme Court? Yes. Many, many years ago? Yes. All right. That we all have to follow. Right. Right. All right. Now... Is there another specific 
unit on the grounds of Middle Tennessee Mental Health Institute where certain persons are sent for a court-ordered evaluation. Yes, we have the Forensic Services Program, which is a separate building on our grounds. Okay. Could you describe that for us? Is it a standalone building? Yes. Okay. And is it a place where people can come and go at will, wander off? No, it's a lockdown secure facility. Okay. And approximately how long has that facility existed? I don't know we were talking about 20 years, maybe more than that. Yeah, it was first uh, established in 1995. 95, okay. Mm -hmm. so. All right. <clears throat> and are there any other facilities like the Forensic Services Program, any other building like that in the state of Tennessee? No. All right. And let me just ask this, in, since 1995, since it's existed, uh, to your knowledge, has anyone sent there for an evaluation ever been able to wander off or escape or anything? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay. So when we're talking about secure facility, that's what it is, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, would you refer to it as a hospital in the sense of some people might have the impression that, well, it's, you know, there's a table with flowers, get well cards, that sort of thing? Um, it is... Um, a very stripped down version of a psych hospital. Okay. Secure unit, are there 24 hour surveillance? Yes. And people there watching? Yes. And when persons are sent to that facility, either for hospitalization after an evaluation or for the actual evaluation itself, is part of the process to watch those people, those patients, criminal defendants essentially 24 hours a day and monitor their behavior. Yes. Right. And you mentioned testing. Mm -hmm. What types of tests, we don't have to go into any really specifics, but are they like written tests, memory tests, things of that nature? Yeah, we have different types of tests. Some of them are written, some of them um, are verbal. Some of them, the patient might have to manipulate objects, um, but we uh, typically uh, uh, evaluate things such as their mental status, their memory, um, psychological disorders and symptoms, and also malingering. Malingering, would we perhaps a synonym for that or another word, faking? Yes. All right. And have you seen and are there people who come through who try to fake mental illness? There are many. All right. And because of that, is that one of the things that you focus on, you and your team? Yes, always. All right. Now, with respect to the reason we're here today, do you recognize the gentleman seated at council table in the yellowish jumpsuit. Yes. And you know that to be Mr. Travis Ryan King. Yes. Was he admitted to the Forensic Services Program on or about July 12, 2018 by an order from Judge Michael Mondelli? Yes. And was he at the secure unit? Yes. And did the process that you've explained take place in his case, the, the testing, the observation, the gathering of records. Yes. And was this done essentially as the team approach that you've described for us? Yes. All right. And let me ask one other thing. When persons are sent to the facility with criminal charges pending, the criminal charges stay pending, correct? Correct. All right, so they don't go away, this is just, court order and evaluation and treatment. Yes. All right. So, and their bond situation doesn't change either, does it? If no. they, they're being held without bond, they say being held without bond. Correct. Right? Okay. Now, I want to ask if during the time that you and your team evaluated Mr. Ryan King, did you form an opinion 
about his present mental competency. Yes. And each of the following questions, or the ones they call for an opinion, I'm going to ask, without repeating the phrase every single time, are the opinions that you will be given giving based upon a reasonable degree of psychological certainty? Yes. All right. So, with that, do you have an opinion? Oh, let me just ask this so back up a second. Did you have a chance to visit with Mr. Ryan King earlier, say half an hour or so ago? Yes. Okay. Now, based upon your evaluations, did you personally, as well as the team, form an opinion as to whether or not Mr. Ryan King is presently suffering from a severe mental illness? Yes. And what was your opinion as to that? That he is presently um, suffering from a mental illness. Okay. And is that an illness that affects his present competency to stand trial? Yes. And did you form an opinion as to his present, and we're talking about today, his present ability for the state to proceed with the charges against him? Yes. And what is your opinion as to that? That he is not competent to stand trial. Based upon that, and of his mental illness, do you have an opinion as to whether or not he presently poses a substantial danger of harm either to himself or others? Yes. And what is your opinion as to that? That he is a danger to others. Do you believe that he is presently in need of treatment in a secure mental health facility? Yes. And would that be the forensic services unit that we've discussed? Yes. And in your opinion, are there any less drastic alternatives other than commitment to this secure forensic unit? Not at this time, since he's not compliant with medication. Okay. Which segues into another term. Is Mr. Ryan King's mental illness one that can potentially be treated with medication? Yes. And would that be one of the goals, if not the primary goal, if he is hospitalized, is to have the medication administered with a goal for him to become competent? Yes. And will that be done if the court orders his commitment? Yes. And now with respect to, and again we'll talk about time frames, <clears throat> if within a week, two weeks, two months, three months, Mr. Ryan King were to become competent in the opinion of you and your team, what are your responsibilities with respect to notifying the court about that? Um, we have to notify the court and when he becomes competent um, and give it a week in advance before he would be transferred back to jail. Okay. So it's not something that you decide and then just sit on? No. Okay. Now, if more months pass, is there a law that requires at least every six months for a report to be made to the court? Yes. Okay. If I might ask that these documents, which counsel has a copy, be passed to, to Dr. Eisen. Sorry. Dr. Eisen, you're being handed two documents. I would ask you if you would look at one of those and see if it is a certificate of need executed by yourself. Yes. And does that contain the findings that are required by statute based upon your observations of Mr. Ryan King and your uh, treatment team's results? Yes. And is there another document, certificate of need, executed by a Dr. David Crawford? Yes. And who is Dr. David Crawford? He is a psychiatrist at the Forensic Services Program. So is, is he a medical doctor then? Yes. Right. And in proceedings of this nature, to your knowledge, does the state require both a psychologist and a medical doctor to be of the same opinion before this proceeding can take place? 
Um, the state requires two experts. One has to be a psychiatrist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They could both be psychiatrists. Both could be medical doctors, but at least one has to be, correct? Correct. Okay. And, Your Honor, I would tender those as collective exhibit to this hearing. All right. <clears throat> and I will certainly leave it to the court's discretion as to, yeah. Yeah. As, number one, a and B. as to whether they would be filed under seal. I think this. I think they could be, Your Honor. I was going to defer to counsel about that. Thank you. One last question, Dr. Eisen. Did your meeting with Mr. Ryan King a few minutes ago or a short time ago change your opinion in any matter? No. So as we are here today at 1.20 p.m. on August 22nd, is it your opinion that he is in need of commitment to the mental health facility for the treatment that will hopefully sooner rather than later have him become competent? Yes. Any else? Those are my questions. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for being here this afternoon, Dr. Eisen. I just have a few questions to follow up on General Moore's questions. First of all, we talked some about competency. Mm -hmm. Why does our Constitution, the United States Constitution, require an individual to be competent before a process can move forward? Um, to make sure that the person is um, being tried in a fair manner, that they are able to understand the proceedings against them and then make decisions in their defense. And the process of determining competency is something that's set down in our statutes? Yes. And that process is being followed now? Yes. So this type of hearing is the type determined or dictated by statute when there are issues of competency? Yes. And within that framework, the statutory framework, MTMHI has its own procedures that it follows, correct? Correct. So you establish a treatment team. Yes. And that way you can benefit from each other's experience. Correct. And the opinions you've expressed today, short of the opinion that you just had a moment ago from your individual meeting, are also the opinions of the other members of the treatment team. Yes. Talk to you briefly, a sort of hypothetical question. Sometimes when you evaluate an individual for competency within the legal system, have you worked with individuals who've, let's say, been employed or been relatively well-functioning within the community in the past? Yes. Is that a different determination than legal competency? Yes. So a person could potentially have had a job or been living independently, and those might or might not affect your determination in competency. Correct. A person can be legally incompetent even having had those advantages or been doing those things. And right. Competency is about the current. And also particularly involving the definition that you gave about being able to assist an attorney and understand the nature of the proceedings. Yes. I could have one moment. Just one follow-up. Do you have a timetable approximately in terms of if the court finds him incompetent and committable today, how long it would be before a bed would be available at the FSP facility? We have one available right now. So he would be moved immediately to that facility and treatment and education could continue? Um, on our end, we're ready to go. I'm not sure about the court or the jail. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Essie. Just for clarification in that regard, he was admitted to the hospital back in July, but was returned to the jail after the evaluations were done. Right. Those are my questions, Your Honor. Let me see, Counsel for me. Thank you, Your Honor. I have no other 
questions, but would certainly welcome any from the court. Mr. Wing and I have discussed that going into any details of the mental illness would be a matter for the court, and we certainly have no objection to the court doing that. Thank you. Doctor, I do have a few questions. You indicated that Mr. Ryan King does have a serious and persistent mental illness. Is that right? That's right. What is it? What's the diagnosis? Schizophrenia. And what kind of factors go into determining that a person has schizophrenia? What are the type of symptoms that you would expect to see? In general or his symptoms? In general. In general? Okay. A big part of schizophrenia is a detachment from reality. So there's hallucinations, delusions, paranoia, disorganized thinking, disorganized speech and behavior. And does Mr. Ryan King display one or more of those type of symptoms? Yes. Is there a standard by which doctors are required to follow in assessing a serious and persistent mental illness? There... The medical guides that you have to follow? There's not a set procedure, but there are standards that people typically follow. I mean, isn't there a book or guidelines that are set down by the American Medical Association, the American Psychiatric Association? Yes, we have the DSM-5. Is that what you follow in making these type of determinations? Yes. And that book is a nationally recognized and accepted book for making these type of assessments? Yes. To be sure, you're not asking this court to evaluate him or form an opinion or make a ruling as to whether or not he is sane. Right. Or insane. Correct. And this is strictly competency? Yes. Can you explain the difference between the two? Being insane means typically that you have... A person has a mental illness that causes a loss in functioning in some way. To be not competent to stand trial, there are many people that have a mental illness that are still considered competent. But to be not competent means that their mental illness is causing them to not be able to assist their attorney in their defense or to understand the proceedings against them. You say the competency is based on his present mental state. Correct. Insanity, doesn't it relate back to what his mental state was at the time of the events that brought him into the system? Yes. Insanity indicates that there's a severe and persisting mental illness, which means that it has occurred for some time. Were you able to obtain any medical or psychiatric records on Mr. Ryan King? We were... He had one previous hospitalization that we were not able to get records on. When a person is declared incompetent, what are efforts taken to make that person competent? Psychiatric medication is a big component. We also do competency training individually and in groups. And based on your experience, is the reestablishment of competency usually successful? Typically, yes. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Anything else based on what I asked? No, Your Honor. And that would be the state's proof in this matter today. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Arguments? Are there arguments? No arguments, Your Honor. Based on the evidence I've heard from Dr. Eisen, I find that Mr. Ryan King does suffer from a serious and persistent mental illness, that being schizophrenia, and that he meets the requirements set out by the American Psychiatric Association 
to meet the standards for uh, schizophrenia. The court also finds that uh, Mr. Ryan King uh, poses a substantial threat of harm to the public, if not to himself, uh, if he were not placed in a secure mental facility to address his serious and persistent mental illness. Uh, that he is in definite need of training and medical treatment for his uh, mental illness. In fact, the evidence is that he's not taking any medication at the present time. And obviously, that's the first step in uh, getting him to become competent and that there are no less uh, drastic alternatives to that of uh, involuntary committal. Uh, therefore, the court does commit Mr. Ryan King to uh, Middle Tennessee Mental Health Institute uh, to take whatever measures are reasonably necessary to see that he uh, becomes and retains competency so that the trial in this case can proceed forthwith. Obviously, as already stated, should competency be established, the court has to be immediately notified. Uh, otherwise, the court will expect uh, and will reevaluate every six months his status as provided for by law. Anything else? No, Your Honor. <coughs> I have a proposed order to present uh -huh. to counsel and a copy actually for Mr. Wing. Mr. Wing needs to sign the original. Oh. There's the one that's paper clipped. It's, uh, it's because of my religion. I Saying based on Dr. Eisen's testimony that if that order can be scanned and sent out to Middle Tennessee, that they'll be transporting this afternoon. I've signed it and it has been filed with the clerk's uh, office. Anything else? 